I would do concordance. No. Uh, uh, online, of course. No. The concordance would only help you with the same things that are concerning the same thing. They w it would put them all in one I row. Know, it helps you. you it helps them. you to find stuff. That's correct. But, oh, that's great. But it ain't gonna find it. Ain't. Is there life in the universe except for Earth? It ain't gonna find that. What the you, hell's the you, matter with you? You, you sure as well, uh, as sure as hell, insist that the Bible says that. <laughs> because and, I've read but, all the scriptures pertaining to those situations. Right, but the concordance is not going to find me that. It'll find you a bunch of scriptures, maybe uh, that point in that direction. Okay. That's all. Okay. But you can't go around saying things like. I don't believe that. I don't believe. You haven't read the book. How do you do that? I mean, where's the difference between you and a stupid uh, zealot, the religious right wing? Well, dummy, I, I, I'm who says the I'm, same I'm, thing. I'm defy. I'm defending science. Where? Science hasn't proved that. Yep. You ever watch Ancient Aliens? That's not science. Of course it is. It's a television program. They're May full of they're you? full of the top scientists. Uh, 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 you it's know, all when they speak, they're speaking speculation. They do not know anything well, they're about showing, life they're showing on a, another planet. They're showing a hell of a lot of uh, 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 deductive reasoning evidence, archaeological evidence. Where on other you got archaeological evidence on other planets? No, they're going back into all the cultures. So how does that prove life on another planet? drawings and, and carvings. How does that prove life on another planet? By all the sightings that were reported. How does that prove life on another planet? Of any kind. But they have more... Even bacteria! They have more proof... I'll accept bacteria! But they have more proof than religion does. Fine. Then accept there what you're saying is proof. But don't go saying the Bible is wrong. I How the hell can you say that? I want to see... Having not read it. You're... Because you're insisting that it says that. And I, I want to see... I'm not insisting that. I said... Many scriptures pulled together say that. That there's no... Not that, one scripture. That, there's no life on... Oh, uh, except on earth. There's no one scripture in the Bible that says that. Then how do you come to that conclusion? I just explained it how many times. The Bible is here a little, there a little. Yes. You must take all the scriptures Ye on the one subject and then you will find out. Your deductive reasoning says that. Anybody's deductive reasoning. Okay. Alright, continue. How can you make that argument? I say no! Continue, exactly, but continue, you can't make that continue, argument. continue. You can't say that. Continue. Now, I say that's your interpretation. No, no, no. That's not acceptable. Well, what about the, the, the verse that says, uh, um, absence from the body, presence with the Lord? You said, oh, Ken is wrong. Ken, yeah, about what? What does that mean? God hates the flesh. Absence from he hates the flesh. The body present with the flesh Lord. Flesh and blood Me cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Means that you're somewhere else. No, it doesn't. It's just what I just said. God hates the flesh. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that. So you're if you are absent, absent from, the, from body, the body, you are closer to God. But how are you absent from the body? Death. You're not a spear being. If you're deaf, you know nothing. Well, for you to be absent from the body means that you something in you is is exiting the body. Exiting the body. So the how does that bring any closer to God? Well, if you're absent, if absent from the body is present with the Lord, that means something... Who said that? How can you be absent from your body and present in the Lord when you have not yet been resurrected? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back to the soul idea. The soul, yeah. Yeah. The immortal soul idea. Soul food. Which is a concept, by the way, from religious nuts who haven't read the Bible. 
you got some nerve to think that there is no other life forms Stop anywhere saying else. I think it. I just said, who thinks it? No other life forms? The Bible. Here's um, um, Clifton number two, uh, giving me the stare down. <laughs> All right, continue. Where did dogs first arrive on the scene? Scientists have long debated that question. And now a study of doggy DNA from around the world is pointing to Central Asia. Man's best friend may have evolved somewhere near what is now Nepal and Mongolia. Previous studies have suggested southern China, the Middle East, Siberia, and Europe as the first place where our first domesticated animal arose from wolves at least 15,000 years ago. I did. Uh, I read a um, textbook about that very subject, and they went even farther back. They showed some ferret-looking um, animal from Africa, and they, it branched off. One became canine, one became feline. But yeah, it only makes sense. Uh, uh, like Speculation. The, the African wild dog, the wolf, just like the, the bobcat, they tie in the bobcat, uh, the ocelot, you know, different, like little, small cats uh, to the domesticated cat. Yeah. For the new work, Adam Boyko of Cornell University and others analyzed the DNA from 549 dogs that represented 38 countries in Africa, the Americas, Asia, Europe, India, and the Middle East, and islands north and east of Australia. The animals were not house pets. They were village dogs that wandered freely in the streets or fields. The researchers examined the DNA for signals of where the dogs had the most ancient roots. That pointed to Central Asia. The analysis did not tackle the contentious question of when the dogs appeared. Results were reported in a paper released on Monday by the journal proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Even Boyko doesn't think the work will end the debate among scientists. I'm not pretending my study alone is enough to rally the community together. He's right. Robert Wayne of the University of California, Los Angeles, who proposed a European origin for dogs, in 2013, based on analysis of ancient DNA, said he didn't buy the conclusion about Central Asia. In an email, he questioned Boyko's use of modern-day genetic material as a guide to the distant past. Another expert, Gregor Larson of Oxford University, called the paper a major step forward, but said he also suspected that modern DNA is not the way to go. Now that Central Asia has been added to the mix, everyone with a favorite region can point to at least one paper that supports their suspicions. Larson is involved in an international project to tackle the question with ancient DNA and anatomical comparisons. Boyko said that that research will provide an important test of his own work. You see, it reminds me of um, this question I asked of the dog breeders that I never got an, a reply. Now, the English Bulldog, which I happen to like very much, it's my favorite breed, uh, they, uh, the English Bulldog of today, you know, the one shown at the, the uh, Westminster uh, uh, dog show, right? Uh -huh. Is not the original 
English bulldog that was used for the uh, cruel sport of bull baiting. Mm -hmm. Now, that dog was more athletic. And what happened is when they outlaw bull baiting, the athleticism, uh, they went for the, for the exaggerated features instead of athleticism. So my question was, why don't you just dig up some of the champion uh, uh, original English bulldogs from the grave and uh, try to find uh, good DNA in the, in the bone marrow and clone one. Nobody answers. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so easy. It's like trying to bring back the, the Tasmanian tiger who's that is extinct. You try to find. They would rather bring back a T-Rex, not a bulldog. Well, it's a start. You can Jurassic eat, you gotta, Park. You gotta practice. Jurassic Park. Man. I know chickens. They found they found good DNA in Montana of T Rex DNA, Sorry, and and being that the bird is the word. <laughs> being that the bird is the word and the closest a living relative to dinosaurs, they wanted to uh, put the DNA in fertile chicken eggs to try to bring back the T-Rex. Jurassic Park. You're right. Scientists in movies and etc. they always do the wrong thing. Well, they like mad science. Okay. Mad. All right. Well, I don't think Goldblum was mad when he first started out with the fly. He had good intentions. Yeah, that's correct. And also... But all roads to Rome, to Rome are paved with good intentions. Road to heaven, road to the road to hell. Road, the road to hell are paved with good intentions. It, yeah, that's an old saying and a very accurate one too. Well, unfortunately, I mean, look at the island of Doctor Moreau, played you by. You need a better GPS for that because there would be nothing at the end of that road. Well, it shows Since the hell does not exist. It shows the corruptibility. Well, it's, it's a saying, you know. It shows. Well, the, a saying is a saying, and should be based on actual fact. Well, it, sh it pr shows the, uh, the the corruptibility of human nature. Yeah, or you the inability to l see consequences ahead of what well, you're doing. Well, if you're if you're if you have good intentions to start. And you become down the road. You become overwhelmed by greed. You know, I'm sure Thomas Edison had good intentions before uh, Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan uh, started waving money under his nose. I'm sure he originally had good intentions. You know, but who knows? Yeah, you know. Who knows? You, you, because know. you told me yourself. All men are. Our, all people on this earth are are evil. Good bingo. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you admitted it. Well, people are scum. We are all evil. There is none that is good. I'm talking about people selling. That's sell also what the Bible says. I'm talking says. about people selling out. I'm not talking about. That. I'm talking about in you. Yeah. No. In selling me. out. Did you tell there me? Is evil. Did you tell me that if somebody waved enough dough in front of your nose, that that's correct? You might think of selling out the newspaper. I mean the newsletter? No, it has nothing to do with the newsletter. Anderson Cooper. It has to do with you becoming corrupt. Anderson Cooper, why do you keep on saying no to when when I when I say something synonymous with what you say, you say to me, "Oh no, that's not it." Now Anderson Cooper started off progressive, then he came out of the closet. So, big deal. He's he, he's a, well, he became a gay <coughs> progressive uh, uh, news anchor or whatever you want to call him that, journalist journalist. That's a problem. Then he sold out with the people who made that perception. He was never a progressive. Well, Why he, would anybody? Well, then have he pretended that? to be one. Whatever, but that's a problem with us. Hillary pretended, uh, uh, and that's a problem with us, isn't it? Because we're not perceiving this. People don't do their homework. They don't because do their we don't research. Well, you don't want to study the Bible. You think I'm going to read that humongous book page by page? I've done it five times. To try to find what you were insisting on before? Five times with notebooks of notes. Oh, you and your notes and writing. It's not for everybody. Damn. It's not for everybody. Well, then you can't say what you say. Mr. Wordsworth. 
You see it's what not, I'm saying? Mr. Wordsworth, it's not for everybody. Then you can't say what you say. That there's, that there is a different form of, I didn't say there were humanoids out there. Don't try to change it. You, you don't, you don't. You actually wanted to speak for the Bible. You think there's no bacteria on Mars. Hogwash. I didn't say Hot, I think, and I, I said wish, the Bible said. And I wish if they, they brought back, they found water I think on Mars, they have, Mars has polar caps. Yeah. I, all they got to do is say, we got bacteria from the rover, we have bacteria from yeah. Mars, and I'm going to tease the dickens out of you, sir. I'm going to tease me. you. It's the Bible. Why are you putting me? So the Bi all right, so the bacteria thing. is phony. The, if the rover brings back bacteria in a rock from Mars, then oh, the then Bible's the, wrong. Then the, 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 the bacteria, then it's a lie. Then the Bible's wrong. And if it's wrong about that one thing, it's wrong about all the other things. Why is it so bad that there might be fungi or bacteria on Mars? Nobody Why is that a bad it was. thing? I just, you're not getting the point. I don't think it's bad. I think it's exciting. My argument was the Bible says so. Yeah, period. That's it. No room for nothing else. Now, if you read the Bible and came up with something else, you can say, oh no, no, the Bible does say it here and there. If you haven't, then you can't speak on that subject. No room for nothing else. Okay? Gotcha. Okay? Well, if you speak on subjects you don't know about it, you create yourself as a fool. Not if I am telling you what science articles say, I'm not a fool. If you're believing that. But they got, but, but a lot of it's but, proven. But, 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 it's but, but, not all theory. A lot of it's not proven. Not what you said. Not what you said is proven at all, period. It's all speculation. Right, because I don't think they actually, in a tangible way, have the bacteria from Mars. No kidding. Okay. And they will not have any. And they will not have any. Now, is that arrogance? And they will not have any. Is oh. that arrogance? Yeah, you're an arrogant, you. you're an arrogant German-American. You're arrogant. Yes, you are arrogant. But I didn't say that. Oh, you didn't? The you Bible just, did. You just said, oh, the Bible you see, said. You uh, can't so let go. Your, your interpretation, it, you still stand stop by your interpretation. Okay. And, and, and stop bringing the personal into things like that. It is when you when it you, is not my interpretation. Some things the Bible interprets itself. Some things in the Bible are are plain as the nose on your face. No, they're o not. Other things have to be deciphered. They may be in another place. Here a little and there a little. Gotcha. You have to put it together. It's a jigsaw puzzle. Gotcha. It is not for those who are lazy or don't want to read it or do the homework. It is not for them. They should just walk away and not enter into the debate. Gee, between you, okay. the cat, Mama Cat, and Clifton. Boy, this Clifton is, is over this with is hours one ago. One hell of a Sunday. No, he 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 looked perturbed because he couldn't come in. You are again when are he came in. You're making an interpretation. And he came in. Somebody must have told him to come in at that time. Nobody did. I mean, it was totally the role. He was supposed to be here two days ago. Was, oh, then that's why his are you fault? making it personal. Then that's his fault. You, 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 and the crumb buns, uh, not you, but the crumb buns that live in this this neighborhood. All right. Oh, he's supposed to be here two days ago, Sunday and he didn't come. He figured I'd be here alone. He didn't know doing nothing. He didn't know that okay. you have uh, an agenda. Yeah. He yeah. thought you were just hanging out and watching TV on a Sunday. I know. The average person I could have been watching the Jets. The average person doesn't get involved in important things. I know. I know how it is. Adaptive supporters. Okay. The People first that democratic presidential debate of the 2016 cycle was far from a complete and utter rout. Bernie Sanders more than held his own and presented a real challenge to Hillary Clinton. A key ideological difference between the two candidates is that Sanders 
has no ties to Wall Street or big money interests. Super PAC money, yeah. Sanders is a candidate who represents the interests of working families. Ooh, yeah, right, that's true. It is a gross overstatement for Bloomberg. News columnist John Heileman to tar characterize the outcome of the Democratic presidential debate as an utter rout by Hillary Clinton. There is serious doubt whether she was even the victim. Oh, she gets great, she gets huge contributions from uh, the media. Many of the mass media pundits who made that declaration had in April written off Bernie Sanders as an outlier and aired again in June by dismissing the staying power of Donald Trump. In the first Democratic presidential debate, Sanders unquestionably won tremendous accolades for clearly articulating points that render him the top contender for the presidency. <clears throat> After the debate, an associate editor at at alternate.org recognized that Sanders won the CNN focus group, the Fusion focus group, and the Fox News focus group. In the latter, he even converted several Hillary supporters. He won the Slate online poll. CNN Time online poll. Nine News Colorado, the Street Online Poll, Fox 5 Poll, the Conservative Drudge Online Poll, and the Liberal Daily Coast Online Poll. There wasn't, to this associate editor's knowledge, a poll he didn't win by at least 18 points. Sanders was the debate winner, if not the majority of the debate audience. Complete and utter rout mopped the floor with the field. We couldn't possibly have been watching the same debate. I thought Bernie Sanders was by far the most authentic candidate on the stage. He projected an honest force and intensity when talking about the issues the middle class working families are most interested in. While Hillary, Hillary Clinton's performance was passable in navigating her several potentially negative issues in a polished, lawyerly way. Sanders was the one who exhibited an intense, truly held conviction about the issues he raised. His honesty and integrity showed in the high point of the evening when he came to Clinton's defense in condemning the focus on her damn emails as a diversion from the important issues facing the middle class. He was clearly the winner. Yeah, he didn't want the email topic to suck up too much valuable time. But when in, uh, in reality, I mean, uh, he, maybe he probably knew she was going to go before uh, Congress, right, for this hearing. Uh, he just didn't want it to become the, the issue. <coughs> um, well, it is still. Yeah, well, people are cheering for her... Um, the way she's handling it, but it's not over. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, there was a Chris Christie cut the funding on something recently. It has to do with food. I'm trying to think what it was. Uh, Christie is always cutting funding mm -hmm. for uh, anything that and helps. Giving tax breaks. Yeah, yeah. To his he, boys. Yeah, he. Oh, yeah. It was, and it, girls. It, he gave another um, big break. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's always doing that. Yeah. He does it at the same time. He'll cut funding 
for the uh, middle class and the poor, the mainstream of New Jersey. Of course. And then he'll uh, he'll give the money to his rich friends. He you know he does that over and over again. And, and then uh, they create jobs in China. And 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 the trickle down is really in China. And uh, Chris Christie got reelected. And the person who really gives a shit about the people did not get elected, Barbara Bono. And people still complain about Christie, and I told them I don't want to hear it on the, on the New Jersey uh, uh, Working Families, whatever, uh, Facebook page. This is a, I don't want to hear anybody's complaining and crying because you did not bother to get behind Barbara Bono and, and, and elect her. You re-elected Christie. You complain during the first term of Chris Christie. You re-elected Chris Christie, and you're still complaining about him. That's it. No, that's it. And if, of course, if you don't vote, you have no right to bitch. All right. Uh, you you want to end it here, or you have uh, one of your light uh, subjects? I have been with my boyfriend for almost five years. Okay. Lately, he seems to want to meet up or hang out with more girls than usual hang out no it doesn't work that way there is no male and female friends if you're seriously involved he has always had female friends <laughs> throughout our relationship some of whom he previously even had sex with but they displayed nothing more than just a friendship <laughs> and act as it acted as if nothing ever happened yeah how do you do that how do you how do you, you have a platonic friendship and then have sex like it was a handshake or something, you know, and then just go back to being platonic? I, I always wondered how that happens. It sounds like the guy is, uh, he's got the kavorka, he's got the lure, the lure of the animal. I was comfortable and okay with these friendships. But isn't meeting new girls kind of like finding a new date? Yes. Or does he just want friends outside the relationship? Are they mostly girls? I don't feel the need to meet other people. I'm comfortable focusing on our relationship. Is this a sign that he is bored? It's a sign that he's messing around. Or, and both, and could be bored. Amy's answer. 